eating, uh, relaxing, listening to good music, and eating good food. So I'm going to pass it off to Sharon for her scholarships. Awesome, I love it. Yeah. So um, I am going to just go over the scholarships a little bit. It's going to be some repetition for our veterans here. Um, but I think as we have a lot of students, a lot of parents joining us today, it's great for everybody to understand what all this Comcore talk is about and what it's about is raising lots of money to give out to youth programs and scholarships. So um Let's see. Thank you. So um, our car show began in 1972. We had such a good track record, and COVID interrupted that. But um, our fundraising, of course, has always been strong. Um, the purpose is really to wait, wait, help raise funds for tuition, not for room and board, but for tuition, and to help promote higher education. Um, the background of our car show, just for some context, so last year we had an amazing year, I think it was the best year we had had for our fundraiser, just shy of $75,000 was raised from our car show, which was amazing. Um, it, when the car show first started, half of that um, would come to scholarships and youth activities. From that 50%, this is a word problem, 60% would go to scholarships for Pacific, and 40% would go to scholarships for non-Pacific. We've always had a very um, strong relationship with Pacific University, wanting to um, return some of that money to our local university. So later on, we swapped those numbers, and a lot of that is reflected that our um, enrollment um, was had shifted right so not as many local students were staying here in Forest Grove a lot of them wanted to get out of town and do something new um, and so we switched those numbers and that's where it says today so when you think about the $75,000 that was raised half of that went to scholarships and youth programs and then we have our um, percentages that go to Pacific University and not Pacific so remember at the beginning of the year when we gave Pacific University $14,000 check that was part of that money, um, and then we held on to some of it um, to issue out to the scholarships here now. So the guidelines of our scholarship is that students live in the Forest Grove, Gaston, and Bay school districts. And that is because there are rotary clubs everywhere. And if you live in Hillsborough, we want you to apply to the Hillsborough Scholarship Program. Um, sometimes kids don't go to those actual schools um, maybe they go to a private school. Maybe they go to Faith Bible or visitation. Um, they can also apply for our scholarship as long as they reside in those school districts. So that's really our focus um, is within those school district boundaries. The other thing, and I, I um, say this in homage to Joe Post, he had a really strong relationship with the four school nights of the DS. And I never know in a room this size. If anybody has connections with the organization of Knights of Pythias, but there was a time where they were very consistent in contributing to our scholarship program. And so I think it's worthy um, to note that, that they were um, also supported that. Um, the last year that they were part of that was in 2018. A lot of that was their, you know, their club size got quite a bit smaller and, and that shifted there. But um, I wanted to acknowledge their relationship with us. So, in 2017, we created an endowment. And so that endowment is here at Pacific University. It started with a contribution of $25,000. The thought of an endowment is that it can be perpetual. And I get really excited about the endowment because I think if we can see a vision, I mean, if we think about our clubs celebrating, what do we got, 50 years of Concord almost, Right, if the right year, next year's 50 years. And, and I don't think it's too short for excited to say, what if we did this for another 50 years? And what if every year we put money in an endowment? And that money can just grow and grow and grow. And it's in the name of Rotary Healthcare at Pacific University. And I think that's a, 
amazing um, vision to have. And so what happens on the number side is oftentimes we don't have as high a number of students, local students staying here in Pacific. So when there are excess funds to fill up you know, we send Pacific 40%. If we don't give all of that money out, the extra money goes to our endowment every year. So this year, a little over $7,000 is going to our endowment. Um, I left, um, the, this slide was was last year's slide, and I put it in, no, that's last year's slide, okay. So um, this is a little bit more about the endowment. Um, Someone had asked for when we were in our doing our budget meeting, and I think it's just great to have. It's exciting. It's transparent to be able to share this information. So um, in 2019, in our 2019-20s, um, 13,000 was contributed to the endowment because of the pandemic, and there was no con card, no contribution was made in 2020. Um, and so at the end of the 2020 fiscal year, the market value of our endowment was 32135 And for the fiscal year of 2021, the market value went up to 37 We sent out a scholarship. In 2022, this is the most recent number. The market value of our endowment is 42000 that does not include the $7,000 contribution that we intend to make. Um, and we'll get new numbers, obviously, just around the corner about that. But you can, in your minds, go, cool, we've got $50,000 so far set aside. Towards That's this huge. It's Come on. Awesome. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> and let's, we started at 2017, right? So that six years, $50,000, again, think about the potential of 20, 30, 50 years in the future. Who will be here? Lucas and I. Okay. Bryce? Yeah. Let's do it, guys. <laughs> um, so, hey, 50 years in the future? I mean, I'll be 95 or something like that. I'll be 62. <laughs> Pushing up daisies. <laughs> so I left last year's slide in here so we had some perspective compared to this year. I was just going to open it. But um, last year we had 33 people apply. You can see the numbers. A lot from Forest Grove, a few from Banks, a few from Gaston. Of that total, only one applicant was going to Pacific University in that group of. 33. We issued us 13 scholarships, and it was a total of $8,500. So the money that was issued out in last year from 2022 was from efforts in 2021. All right? It's confusing, but that's, that's math. So this year, 2023, we're issuing out money from last year's Concord 2022. So a few things. Um, we have a lot fewer applications. Um, still a lot from Forest Grove, 16, three from Banks, one from Gaston. Six people are attending Pacific University. That's awesome. Out larger scholarships ranging from one thousand to two thousand dollars because we had so much more money. We issued out twenty two thousand dollars of scholarships this year compared to eight hundred thousand. <laughs> well, I'm in the numbers world, so I created a chart, <laughs> and um, I like to show the perspective of applications as I'm. Saying this, what would be cool for me to have a chart that showed the money handed out too? Maybe I'll work on that for next year. I know. Hold your breath. It'll be very exciting. Um, so this just shows how the scholarships have changed over time, the number of people applied, and from what schools. We can see where our money is really going um, as far as local scholarships are concerned. 
Okay, so 2023, what was different? So we had 13 less applications, and I think a big part of that was the application process was different. This year, Forest Grove High School rolled out a program, um, and they acknowledged, hey, we're trying something new, we'll see how it works. It was a single source application process where you could go and say, hey, um, Rotarians, Rotary, this is our eligibility standards. And every other scholarship did the same thing, right? They created their eligibility guidelines. I guess it's a better word. You could go in, you could see what you're eligible to apply for, submit um, additional information. Like we always ask for a transcript, two letters of recommendation, some short essays. And then we also had it on our website because we have kids from Banks and Gaston, right? And so um, that is an area I hope to improve on, is having a simpler process there. Um, it's not my strong suit, but it's a working process. Um, and then the other change that I think is exciting is because we had so much money last year, we actually didn't hand all of it out for the non-Pacific students. And so it's the same idea as starting an endowment with Pacific, is the idea, what if we could start a kind of endowment for the, the non-Pacific? And so at this point, what we've just done is we've held $15,000 um, aside. Um, it's not, it's, too early to put that in an endowment. Endowment cannot take the principal out, so it's, um, it's an irreversible action. So um, we don't want to, um, you know, commit to that at this time. But the thought process is, gosh, if we had another stellar year, right, we could really start to build funds um, on both sides of the equation um, for Pacific and non-Pacific students. So. That's a little bit about our scholarship program, a reminder for those who have been here for years, and hopefully as parents, maybe there's siblings out there, um, to just know how um, our car show, which is going to be the third Sunday in July, um, how those funds directly pay out to um, local students. Here, we have awarded out 16 scholarships. It was amazing. Here are our people, and we're lucky enough to have several of the students here. And so, um, rather than me butchering some of these names, I'm going to ask all of our scholarship recipients to come up. Stand up. Come up here. acknowledged and honored for your hard work in your view totally embarrassed that's okay um, because we um, as Rotarians are really proud of you guys and we are really excited to give you money and so what I'm going to ask you guys to do is to tell us your name what high school you're from where you're going to go to college the volunteer or activity you are most proud of. And then if you have a guest, you should introduce your guest, <laughs> right? I know that's a lot. But we want to acknowledge your parents as well, because I know a lot of them came to support you. All right. I'm going to guess Benjamin? Yep. Yes. All right. You get to start us off, OK? All right. So I'm Benjamin. This year, I'm planning to attend Oregon State, but I'm actually planning to attend Women College in Walla Walla, Washington. And um, my uh, volunteer activity that I am most proud of is uh, during COVID. Uh, my mom, which is the principal of St. Francis, needed help uh, setting up the school to fit needs for uh, social distancing, and so she reopened the school. So I spent like the entire summer just working for my mom, rearranging furniture, moving furniture in and out of classrooms so that she could uh, start 
her school up. And she was actually like the first school in the area to open up. So, yeah. That's so, awesome. Oh, yeah. So my parents are in there. Right. And then, too. And then, yeah. <laughs> my name is Ashley Shady, and I'm from Banks also. I plan to go to George Fox University to study nursing. Um, I didn't bring any guests, but I came with Andy. <laughs> and my volunteer activity that I'm most proud of is probably for the last two years I kind of by myself ran a uh, holiday toy drive for pediatric patients at Randall's Children's Hospital. So I did that for the last two years, and that's what I'm most proud of. Hi, I'm Annie Nevis. I'm also from Banks. Um, I'm planning to attend. Oregon State University next year to major in marketing. And the volunteer activity I'm most proud of is during COVID, um, all like the churches shut down and they needed someone to run the live stream. So I volunteered every weekend for, I think from May 2020 all the way to like December 2021, every Saturday from four to six and every Sunday from 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. for every weekend. <laughs> and then live stream. So, that's yeah. Awesome. yeah. Alrighty, well, hi there. I'm Sydney Tim. I just graduated from Forest Grove High School and I'm planning to attend Pacific University next year to study music education. I think that probably the volunteer thing that most stands out in my mind was during COVID when Pacific was running the vaccine clinics to get everybody as many people vaccinated as possible, I was able to help out with that and to receive translating from English to Spanish to ensure that our Latino population was able to get the information they needed as well. Yeah. Um, hello everyone. My name is Selena Garcia Cervantes and I just graduated from Forest Park High School as well. Um, in the fall, I'll be attending Columbia University to study political science and Hispanic studies. And um, I would say one of the happiest moments while volunteering was when we were at a food pantry and um, I distributed this home cake to a little kid and he was beyond happy because it was actually his birthday that day and I was, I was super happy to have actually given him the cake. And it just made my heart fill with joy, so I was really happy with that. And today, my mom is here with me. I have a pink shirt. And yeah, so thank you guys. My name is Alyssa Wynn, uh, and I graduated from Fort Grove High School, and I'm going to Western Oregon University to study psychology. Um, my most, uh, I didn't come here. Anybody. Um, and my most uh, like important is also the food pantry. It's just um, seeing all the people in need who get what, like, who are able to get services, and also knowing like people in my life who I know that also need those services. I think it's really meaningful. I'm Matthew Luther. Uh, I'm from. I graduated from Forest Grove High School, and I'm going to Oregon State University. Um, I'm studying civil and forestry engineering. Um, and oh, my dad. Kevin Luther up there. Um, I'd say my proudest uh, volunteering experience is um, putting together my Eagle project, which was a mural. Uh, Tom called for elementary, and I put that together and painted it. Hi, my name is Ainsley Henry. I also graduated from Forest Grove High School and I will be attending the University of Portland to study civil engineering. I don't have any guests with me today, but my favorite activity related to volunteering is actually being the co-president of my NHS chapter. So for the National Honor Society, volunteering is obviously a very big part. So just getting to not only doing volunteer activities myself, but to help my members get out there and try to encourage them to also see the value of volunteering and hopefully next year some of them will apply and, and continue to volunteer throughout their lives. Yeah, thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Lisa Ortiz Santos. Um, very nice to meet you 
well. I also graduated from Forest Grove High School. Um, I also didn't bring anyone with me today, um, but I appreciate you guys welcoming us. Um, my proudest volunteer moment, I would say, would be outdoor school. I know a lot of students do that, but I see why a lot of students choose to volunteer at outdoor school. It really like reminded me why, like, when I was a little kid, I wanted to be a teacher. I wanted to be a teacher. So that was really cool, like, that rekindling, like, oh, I want to, like, teach things to people, and I want to be there to help people. Um, well, I will be attending Pacific University yes. in the fall, so thank you. Good job. Okay, ready. One, two, three. Thank you. Beautiful. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I think you guys can see it's really amazing um, what our young adults are doing these days. Pretty proud volunteer moments. Anybody have questions about the scholarships or anything before I hand over the mic? Well, I really want to thank all the scholarship recipients for coming. They are all done with school, every one of them. And so um, we appreciate you guys being here. We appreciate the parents being here. Tell your friends to apply for scholarships, all right? We'll do it, okay? And sell color court tickets. <laughs>